If you randomly turn a Rubik's Cube once every second, how long would it take to solve? Some might guess years, maybe thousands, but they wouldn't even be close. On average, it would take over a trillion years. And we're going to break down exactly why this tiny puzzle has such an astronomical number of possible combinations. Well, to start off, let's focus on just one piece. This edge can either be flipped or solved. So there's two possible ways to position this edge. But if there were two edges, then you can have them both flipped, just one or the other one flipped, or both solved. But you can also swap the pieces with each other and do all the different flips once again, giving us eight possible combinations. But what about for three edges? Well, here things get a bit more complicated. Firstly, we choose whether or not we flip the first edge. I'll use F to indicate flip and N for no flip. The next, whether or not we flip the second edge, then the third, and out of these, you'll see there's eight possible combinations. Next, we figure out how many ways we can place each edge if we swap them around. To do this, let's take them all out. From here, there are three ways we can place the first edge, two for the second one, and of course, just one for the last one. I'm of course only showing one way to do it, but if we make the decision tree once again, with letters representing the left, right, and bottom slots, you'll see there's six in total. And if we change the amount amount of branches there are into just a bunch of numbers multiplying with each other, you'll get 48. And of course, you can expand the numbers out like this from the decision trees, and note that it doesn't matter which order you make these decisions, the total number of combinations will stay the same. And with four edges onwards, you might see a pattern. We can choose to either flip or not flip these four edges, and there's now four ways to place the first edge back in, then three ways to place the next one, then two, then one. And now we're at 384 possible combinations, about the amount of people on a big plane. We can also simplify this by shortening this to 2 to the power of 4 and this to 4 factorial. At five edges, it's about the amount of people in a large high school, with six, the amount of seats in a football stadium, then we keep upping the number to the population of a small city at seven, a big city at eight, at nine, over half of the US, at 10, almost half the people on Earth, at 11, 10 Earths, and at 12, everyone on Earth flying a plane that can fit about 250 people. But hang on a sec, we haven't covered all of the pieces yet, so do we keep going? Well yes, but if you try turning the puzzle now, notice how all the edges are swapping amongst themselves and never with the corners, and the centers are fixed in place so we don't worry about those. Likewise, if we focus on the corners, they will always swap amongst themselves and never with the edges. This means they are both separate groups of pieces, and we can calculate the corners by themselves and multiply them with the edges later. It's similar to what we can do for the edges, except that a corner piece can be twisted in one of three ways instead of flipped in one of two. This idea of how to twist or flip the piece is called orientation. And since there are eight corners, we can multiply three by itself eight times to cover all possible corner orientations. And the amount of ways you can place the pieces in the first place or swap them around would be the same as what we had for eight edges and well, eight of anything. This idea is called permutation. Multiply these numbers and we get this which is close to the population of a big country, like Indonesia. Meaning that if everyone from Indonesia held their own mini-earth with a bunch of mini-humans, all flying their own mini-planes with 250, I guess, aliens, you would get the total number of combinations for assembling a Rubik's Cube. But of course, what we really want to know is how many of them we can reach through normal turning, because most are impossible. To show this, let's say we do one turn, and 
wanted to twist all of the corners so that all the white and yellow stickers point up or down so that they are all oriented correctly. Well, we can twist this one clockwise, this one anti-clockwise, and do the same for the ones down here. So two clockwise and two anti-clockwise twists. To simplify things, we can think of each anti-clockwise twist as two clockwise twists. So six total clockwise twists. And if I reset the twists and turn it a bit more, it would still take the same amount of twists. But if I keep on scrambling it around and show how many clockwise twists we need, what you'll notice is that it's always going to be a multiple of three no matter how much it's turned. So if we're never getting a scramble that has any of the numbers in between, it means only a third of the combinations that can be achieved through assembling the puzzle can be reached through normal turning. And a similar idea applies for the edges too, although it only has two possible orientations, flipped or solved. But because some edges don't have a white or yellow sticker and there are positions that don't have a sticker facing up nor down, we can think of the green and blue stickers and the front and back positions as being quote unquote oriented correctly in such cases. It's harder to explain than the corners, but if you scramble up the cube like we did, for the corners. While this isn't the best example, you'll always get a multiple of two flips needed to properly orient the edges. This means we'll never see a scramble with an odd number here through normal turning, so we only see a half of all the possible scrambles we can achieve through assembling the cube. But that's not all. Let's go back to a solved cube yet again and do one turn. Let's say we wanted to swap pieces around to put it back together. It'll take three swaps for the edges and three swaps for the corners. And once again, if we turn it around more, you'll notice another pattern. Since every turn moves both the edges and corners in a specific way, both the edges and corners are either even or odd, but it's never odd even or even odd. So once more, only half of the total combinations are accessible through normal turning. So if we combine these fractions together, we'll learn that we can reach a twelfth of the possible combinations through normal turning and multiply it by the number we had before and we get this, about 43 quintillion or million 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 possible combinations. So comparable to the amount of grains of sand on earth, or everyone in Indonesia holding an earth and each person is instead piloting a large private jet with 20 other aliens. So a bit less than the analogy before but still a lot. And if you make one turn every second, that's 60 turns in a minute, 360 in an hour, 86,400 in a day, and about 31 million in a year. But if we divide the amount of possible combinations by this number, it'll take on average over 1 trillion years to solve. And even if you turn as fast as the world record holder at his best, or the world's fastest robot, it's still gonna take a really long time. In fact, even if all 8 billion people on Earth turned a Rubik's Cube every second, it would still take 171 years on average for someone to solve a Rubik's Cube, so not within their lifetimes. And even if everyone just solved the cube when it's one move away, that number drops down to 9 years, but still with the help of everyone on Earth. But of course, that's only if you rely on pure luck. Of course, if you just learn a proper method that solves every everything piece by piece, that time goes all the way down to minutes or even seconds by just one person or robot. So if you're overwhelmed by something, don't get lost in the sheer number of possibilities. Just take one mindful step at a time and before you know it, you'll have the whole puzzle solved. Thanks for watching and check this video out cause the YouTube god said so.